The disclosure by former General Officer Commanding GOC 1 Div of the Nigerian Army, Major General Danjuma Ali Kefi, retired on the death of former Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiro, has raised questions about the demise of the late General. Ali Kefi, who was scheduled to receive the late Army Chief in Kaduna, pointed to the sudden change of time for Atahiro's trip to Kaduna the change of aircraft, change of airport of London from the military airstrip to the Kaduna International Airport. His landing in the turbulent, stormy weather and the air shattering explosion that occurred before the crash. He also pointed to the fact that there was no crater or impact on the crash area, noting that the bodies of the passengers were flung out of the aircraft and burnt beyond recognition long before the aircraft came down. A strong indication that there was an explosion. During an interview on Arise News Night on Tuesday, Ali Kefi doubled down on his assertion that the aircraft exploded mid air. First and foremost, it's uh, important to put this uh, in the proper perspective. Right, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Ibrahim Atahiru, the late uh, Chief of Army Staff, who died in that uh, ill fated uh, plane crash. Uh, on the 21st of May uh, 2021 uh, was uh, highly committed in the fight against uh, insurgency terrorism in the country. And uh, within the short period of his, uh, of, uh, of his time, of his headship of the Nigerian army, uh, we all witnessed uh, uh, tremendous uh, uh, progress in, 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 the, in the security situation. Uh, uh, largely in in the northwest and uh, other parts of uh, the country, we were approaching the uh, the tarmac to receive him, and uh, the weather was really atrocious. It was really heavily. In fact, uh, there was uh, uh, ice particles, and we I believe uh, the aircraft we saw it we sighted it from a distance, right descending to land. Uh, it was uh, at about tree top level. So when we rounded the bend uh, to the tarmac, uh, we prepared to go and receive at the foot of the aircraft uh, with, uh, and I even directed my aide de camp then that uh, he should uh, get the orderly to come with two umbrellas for us. This is so uh, believing that by the time we uh, got on the tarmac, uh, right, is, that is uh, the aircraft would be taxing to a stop. So uh, we, we didn't sight the aircraft uh, on the runway. And uh, we looked frantically around, then saw a burning flame by the side of the runway. Uh, it was the aircraft burning. Now, uh, like I said, the aircraft was at uh, tree top level when we sighted it coming to this. So uh, it wasn't, the altitude wasn't so high. Now, if an aircraft should fall uh, from that altitude, from that height, it will fall like a box. I mean, it wouldn't disintegrate. But again, uh, if it fell uh, from that height, and then this, right, the impact, it would come with uh, dead weight, heavy weight, and uh, there will be uh, uh, some uh, uh, crater that is uh, borrow some hole uh, into the ground. And uh, let's not forget it was on the soft grass, not on the hard tarmac, uh, on the hard runway. So, but there wasn't anything like that. And also, I, uh, we, we looked around, uh, uh, this and there, there was no corpses around. It was later, we, we saw the corpses uh, uh, strewn uh, some distance away from the aircraft, and uh, unfortunately, they were on fire. Uh, apparently, the, uh, the, 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 they were in flames at the time the aircraft is in. Now, if there wasn't an explosion in that aircraft, that mid-air mid -air explosion, they would have come down without aircraft to the ground, and they will be strapped to their seat, perhaps, on the ground with that distance. But that was not the case. They were flung out of the aircraft, which uh, I'm not an expert in uh, aviation. I'm an expert in this, uh, this thing. But uh, common sense, right? Uh, this, uh, it was indicative that an explosion happened mid-air, and that was why they were flown out. And that was why the aircraft did not come out in full, uh, that is, in, in its full form. It, uh, uh, it came out in uh, debris, wreckage, uh, that did not have that uh, uh, force to, 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 to cause crater on the ground. 
Joining us now on The Morning Show to discuss the latest statement by Major General Danjuma Ali Kefi, retired. Is Air Vice Marshal Golaon Adekunle retired, former Chief of Training and Operations at the Nigerian Air Force. Welcome to The Morning Show, Air Vice Marshal Adekunle. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Dr. Abbasi. Well, thank Thanks you for very much. Me. Well, you listen to your uh, colleague, uh, Air Vice Marshal Danjuma Ali Kefi, raising conspiracy theories about the death of uh, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Matahiro on 21st May 2021 on his way to Kaduna uh, to attend the personal parade of uh, recruits. Um, what do you think of the allegations by uh, General Ali Kefi? Or do you think that uh, if there is no merit to those uh, allegations, will you accuse him of uh, sour grapes, considering the fact that the second leg of his submission is that he's asking uh, President Tinubu to look also into the fact that he was arrested, he was detained, and he was uh, removed because he was uh, involved in uh, Atairu's attempt to go after terrorism financiers, whom he's accusing of being behind that uh, accident. And also top officials uh, within the military also being behind terrorism financing. Is there any merit to his claims, in your view, having been also in service, I think, at the time? Um, first, I'd like to uh, start by uh, asking the good Lord to continue to rest the souls of our departed colleagues, uh, General Tairu, and all those who were with him on that uh, faithful day, to continue to grant them eternal rest and console and comfort their families. Because um, some of the things I've heard uh, in the general's interview, uh, to say the least, shocking. Shocking in the sense that we as military colleagues must have respect for ourselves, whether in life or in death. Moreover, these people that you are talking about have widows, they are family members who are still alive. I wonder how excited they will be to hear that there is a possibility that some untowardly things took place that led to that air crash. In the first instance, I've listened to the general's uh, interview over and over. He started by saying that he is not an expert in aviation. So that itself speaks volumes. If you are not an expert in something, why go into something this controversial for God's sake? He spoke about seeing the aircraft at treetop. If you saw an aircraft at treetop, it was, that means the aircraft was almost landing. At the same time, you said the aircraft must have been shot down. If it was already at treetop when you saw it, at what point was it shot down? If it was at treetop, you are talking about 50 feet or less. So at what point was, was it have been shot down? For you to now come up with this uh, conspiracy theory. But as, as they say in law, he who alleges has to prove. So it's up to General Atairu to prove that um, there's any sort of uh, truth or any reason for anyone who is unbiased to believe what they have said. All right. I've read the report. I've spoken with practically all the people who were there when this incident happened. I actually wanted to be involved in the accident investigation, but the chief insisted then that, look, okay, you know, this thing involves the army. Let's get the NCA, in, uh, the Air, Air Accident Investigation Board. That's because we have Air Accident Investigators in the Air Force. But he said, let's get the AIB involved so that we will not only be, be, be fair, we will also be seen 
to be fair and uh, neutral. I have so a question. I don't know where this, this theory. Okay, are you accusing General Ali Kefi then of sour grapes? Because he's also concerned that he was arrested, detained, and that he was uh, the hero that was not allowed to uh, reveal the secrets. Now, we are talking about a general here, and I, Adi Adekunle, it's not in my character to uh, impugn the, the, the integrity of anyone. I have to assume that he's a gentleman. Because the GOC one leave is no ordinary appointment. For the army to have entrusted anybody with that such a responsibility, the person must be a gentleman. Right. He must be a knowledgeable professional. He must be someone worth his salt. So it is not up to me to assess his character. It's up to the army to decide whether they are promoted an officer beyond his competence or capability. I like to focus on the, the professional military aviation aspect of what has happened. All right. I like to focus on the air accident investigation aspect of what has happened. The report is not something that is graded secret or top secret. It is available for whoever wants to see it. It's a confidential report, as should be any accident report. Because it's not something that you throw on the streets for everybody to see, especially because of the, uh, the, the caliber of people that were involved in the air crash. But if you have reason to utilize that report for any further action, the report is available for you. All right, sir. I so I that's what I'd like to concentrate on. For, as, as for General Ali Kefi, he must have his reasons. Okay, I want to talk about that was report. Saying he was Yes, let's talk about the report. Okay, go ahead. Yes. So, in 2021, a preliminary report was said to have been handed over to uh, the chief of air staff at the time. Um, and they said that they had 27 um, observed findings and some recommendations from that preliminary report. However, as the name suggests, it was just a preliminary report and they were looking forward to, that's the AIB, to be mandated to then proceed on a full report. As at last year, May 21, 2023, a full report hadn't yet been commissioned. Therefore, what's only in existence, at least to the, to the best of our knowledge, is that preliminary report, which you say is confidential. Based on that, number one is, why didn't, I mean, you would agree with me that there were high profile military men on that crash, the chief of army staff. Why were the military loath to institute a full investigation into what happened by the AIB? That's one. The second thing is, based on the recommendations, the findings, the 27 findings from that report, the preliminary report, what has been done based on that report? Yes, you may, it may be confidential, but have the recommendations been taken forward? But very curiously, what one would wonder is that the, the, you know, one would expect that there would be a full investigation instituted. Why was this not done? And have the recommendations from the preliminary reports been taken on board? Let me correct the impression that um, a full investigation has not been done. The investigation board, whose report I have with me, consisted of both AIB and uh, Air Force personnel. That's number one. Number two, some of the recommendations had to do with what needed to be done by civil avi aviation agencies. Those sir, agencies sir, that have to received to the that aspects of that report that concerned them. That report you're referring to is not- That required them to take steps to ensure that- It's not the full report. If you accept the date is beyond the 2021 report, September 2021, it was given as a preliminary report. And as at last year, there was no full report. So except between last year and this year, a full report was instituted. Just to also correct that, that, that was not a full report. It was a preliminary report by the AIB jointly, like you mentioned, AIB and the Air Force. If you let me learn, ma'am, 
Sometimes it takes a very long period to get feedbacks back from other original equipment manufacturers. Like you may see an aircraft, they say it's manufactured in the United States. The propeller may have been manufactured in Argentina. The tires may have come from Brazil. So when that aircraft gets involved in an accident, you will send these different components, the ones that you've recovered, back to the original equipment manufacturers for analysis. Some of this analysis takes unbelievable length of time to get back. It is on the basis of what you have received from these original equipment manufacturers that you can add pieces together, what you call a final report. And in so many cases, it takes years. Even in an aircraft accident that involved the president of a country, General Zia Luhak died in, an, in a Pakistani Air Force aircraft. It took several years before the report, the final report, was put together. I just am not happy about the fact that, you know, the, the image of one of the most decent army officers I ever met, you know, who's been dragged. That officer should be allowed to rest in peace. If General Ali Kefi has issues, as a professional colleague, I would expect him to take up with the system that raised him. If a system picked you up as a young school sat holder, 30 something or 40, almost 40 years ago, and developed you to the level of, of a general, if you have a problem with that system, I think you should be decent enough to go back to that system and be able to resolve that problem within that system. Except there is something else he's hiding that he hasn't told us. From information available to me, the present chief of defense staff is his cosmate. If the CDS is my cosmate and I have a problem with the army, <coughs> excuse me, concerning the manner in which I exited, I'll be, I should be able to get that matter resolved. Except I have an issue myself. Like I said, I assume he's a gentleman. And as a gentleman, there are certain steps. Out. You were in the army for 30 something years. If you have an issue with the army, you should be able to resolve it within the army. But if you are unable to resolve it within the army, and you choose to take it up with the, 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 the commander in chief, who is the father of all anyway? It should be done in a manner that you do not denigrate the image or, okay. or personality okay. or you know, corporate okay. image of the armed forces. OK, Air Vice Marshal, good to see you, sir. Good morning. Uh, happy New Year to you. It's, 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 it's very good sad morning. that you know, we're talking about this again. And, uh, but a couple of things I'd like to ask you. Number one, do you by any chance have read that private report, internal report released, and the recommendations. I have it right in my front here. You have read it. I have what it was right said? In my front I'd like here. to ask you what was said yes. in that report. If you have read it, what, what areas were what, itemized? What it said as regards the investigation and as regards the data read from the black box. Oh yes, he spoke about. The, <clears throat> the speed at the time of impact, the angle of attack, you know, data, the, 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 the copy voice recorder and the data recorder will only give you certain small, small indications which an expert will now put together and translate to give you what the ordinary man on the street can make something out of. But what I can tell you from a professional aviator's Perspective no, I'm, is that no, I'm talking everything about, I've read no, in that report no, I'm talking tallies about, with what we, uh, we assume must no. have happened. So it's, it's, not, it's not assumption here. I'm saying, encountered I'm saying the flight data recorder data, what was said in that report about what mm -hmm. the flight data recorder recorded. Uh, it's, it's quite a lengthy report. So yeah. if you allow me to go to the CVR. Page. I'll read exactly to you exactly what it says. 
Flat data recorder. Yes. The following was deduced from the flat data recorder plots attached below. Nigeria, November Gulf Romeo 203, departed runway 22 Abuja Airport at Soso time, and you know, a lot of stuff that uh, uh, routine. Yeah, the specific at data in front of the flat data recorder. November Gulf Romeo 203 changed heading from about uh, five degrees to three five five degrees and back, which suggested an orbit. Of course, if you are approaching an airport and you see what appear to be weather approaching, or you are uncomfortable with the, uh, the approach itself, maybe you think you are too high, you take an orbit and in the process of that orbit, you lose height or gain height as may, as may be necessary. Then it says, at 1704, autopilot was disengaged. November Gulf Remedy 303 was at 491 feet radio altitude. Wind direction changed momentarily through 180 degrees. These are small, small, everyday you know, recording that you get from a, a flight data recorder. At 1,731 seconds, November government 203 okay. was at 100 okay. feet. It, it's this is an aircraft that the general is claiming was shot down. It was still intact at 100 feet. Okay, so is those parameters would like to pretty much look at and match them up with his claim. You know, at first he talked about flight routes, the sudden change, the sudden surge in time, the visibility outlook. That's what I, I, I deliberately asked. Apart from this, the other question that is very curious is why has there been no inquest? Because something like this, owing to the fact that we have an antecedent which was shrouded in a lot of mystery, a la the Itoki case in the early 90s, why have there been no inquest as regards what led to the death of very fine, not only, you know, General Tahiru, but other fine generals like Brigadier General, you know, Olaika and, and a couple of other people that were on that plane. Why has there been no inquest? I'm not talking about the internal report now, but a solid inquest where the public gets a chance to know what really happened. Because till date, as it is with Nigeria, we don't still know what truly happened in the Turkey. When you say talking, I, 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 I don't really understand which incident you are referring to. Maybe if you mention the aircraft that was involved, Hercules. then I'll be able to the Hercules. relate to it. No, I'm talking about the Hercules, the popular well, the Hercules, Hercules case. Uh, no, I disagree with you, sir. With due respect, the C-130 report is all over the place. It's all over the place. In fact, several newspapers have carried it Severally, but over but, and over. But till date, there is nothing hidden about the C-130 no, no. report. This is my point, sir. If you can hear me, please hear me out. But till date, there's still a lot of controversy surrounding what was the report itself and the feelings of people. Hence, the need for an inquest, not just an AIB now, not just an accident bureau investigation, but an inquest that brings in other parts into it. So I'm asking, why has there been no inquest? The Nigerian Air Force has taken in all the recommendations that were made consequent upon the C-130 accident. And a lot of them have impacted upon how we operate till today. Be fair to us between that time and now, have you had any of our C-130s or indeed any of our major aeroplanes involved in such accidents before? The answer is no. When you say relates what is in a report to how people feel, my brother, aircraft operation is an exact science. It's not a question of how I feel. We cannot base, you know, how we operate an aeroplane on how people feel. A general thinks because the army has treated him unfairly, they must have, you know, somebody must have conspired to kill somebody. Come on, Jamal, let's, let's, let's be fair to ourselves. If he thinks he has an issue with the army, as a gentleman, as a man that was raised by the same army, he should resolve it within the, the army. But 
the issue of inquest, the best inquest you are going to get when it comes to an aircraft accident is an accident investigation report. And in the case of the November Gov 0203, I have one right in my front here. Some of the, what you call final reports in, 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 in some cases take years because maybe perhaps a particular equipment manufacturer has not been able to submit its own findings. And then that's, well, that's why the final compilation has not taken place. MVM. Uh, but I can assure you that nobody is trying to hide anything here. MVM. General Ali Kefi was very specific in terms of his prayers. He wants President Tinubu administration to revisit the case. In your view, as someone who was in service at the time, who is very familiar with the accident and the reports, do you think that President Tinubu should take that advice? And if he does, what should, be look, what should the administration be looking out for afresh in terms of the allegations that Tali Kefi has put on the table? Look, the mere fact that people like you are taking time to ask questions is enough reason for people to be worried. First and foremost, I'm not happy that a man will, will leave the army after spending the most useful years of his life and leave an unhappy. I, am, I, I do not subscribe to that. But the president is a busy man. He's also the father of the nation. If somebody has asked that he takes a second look, at an incident or at an issue which I, I would rather have assumed has been thoroughly dealt with by those who are qualified so to do. Well, maybe the president should set up a panel, but you have to also bear in mind what is the end state you seek to achieve by setting up that panel? Because you are going to end up creating, you know, opening a Pandora box of all kinds of issues. When I say Pandora box, I mean, if you do this now, other people will say, ah, this president is a listening man. He used that are not supposed to be on the president table. They bring it to the, to, to the president. I'm, I have no problem with the president taking a look at it. The president is a listening man. He's, he takes a, a, a long time view of EU. He's not a man who takes decision as a, as a, a sprinter. He takes the decision as a, as a marathoner. So, let that, which will make everybody comfortable, be done. But I can assure you, on the basis of what I have, what I've read here in this report, nothing but I wouldn't want to say we'll be wasting the president's time. Because even before this report came out, listening to the facts, right. I knew or I could imagine what must have happened. And the deductions, the conclusions they have come to, perfectly align with, you know, with, with the conclusions we reached. All right. Thank you so very much for your time this morning. Air Vice Marshal Wolaon Adekunle retired.